Brothers and sisters, we have uh, received a lot of uh, rain recently, especially yesterday. And today's, you know, turned out beautiful day, isn't it? You know why? You don't know why. Because I'm preaching today, so. <laughs> you know, I haven't preached at the 11 uh, Mass for a long, long time. All right. Are you ready? Let me, um, let me begin with the, um, the second reading. Okay, the second reading is uh, the story about uh, St. Paul, uh, Philemon, and his servant. Okay? You know, I, I, like, I like the way that St. Paul, you know, addressed the people. You know, I, Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner for Jesus Christ. Very straightforward, right? Very, very straightforward, that's right. And he asked Philemon that because, you know, um, Paul had brought Philemon to faith in Jesus. And um, Philemon was a wealthy man with a servant, and he, um, he became a religious leader in the community. And one day, his servant, Onesimus, ran away. We don't know what reason, right? But it uh, made his way to Paul, who was in prison. It seems that Paul also brought, you know, Onesimus to faith in Jesus. He baptized him. And that is why Paul refers him as a child of mine, a spiritual son. So Paul sends Onesimus back to Philemon and calls, and calls on Philemon to receive Onesimus no longer as a slave, but as a brother in the Lord. For he is now because of his baptism. And St. Paul said to uh, Philemon, you know, I'm not forcing you to do it, but if, if you, if your relationship with the Lord is the primary relationship in your life, you must now relate to Onesimus no longer as a slave, but as a brother. So that we reflect on this. If we have a good relationship with God, if we put, you know, our relationship with God in the first place of our life, and through the baptism, we are brothers and sisters. No matter, because when the Lord is the primary love in our life, you know, when we give him first place in our life, then we will be moved to treat one another as brothers and sisters including those who are very different from us. And we move to the uh, first reading. Because the first reading, the first reading is um, about how to know God. You know, you can see me here right now, right? But do you, do you know that what is in my mind right now? Probably not. Okay, you can guess all day, you know. And I, I, I don't know it either, so don't worry. <laughs> all right, so that we know from experience how difficult it can be to understand what is going on in someone else's mind and heart. We, we can't find ourselves wondering why, you know, someone acts in the way he or she does. 
we can even something, we can even be something of a mystery to ourselves. That's why we can often find ourselves wondering why we say or did something. So the first reading from the book of the wisdom acknowledges this, remarking on how hard it is to work out what is on earth and how, you know, how difficult it is to know, you know, what lies within our reach. The conclusion that the author draws from this is how much more difficult must it be to know the intention of God and to understand what God wants. We struggle, all right? We struggle, but don't worry. You know, from the first reading, as he say, we need God's help. You know, we need wisdom and the Holy Spirit to guide us, to direct us, to help us to understand. And God has given us wisdom. That is Jesus Christ. And he sent the Holy Spirit from above to help us to recognize, to recognize the intention of God and to do his will. And here's the people uh, from the first reading say that, you know, we are human beings, you know, normally we have the tendency to think about earthly things very much. That can weigh it down, you know. So, listen to the gospel and see. A lot of people, right? Yeah, many more than this, you know, uh, congregation. A lot of people were following Jesus, following Jesus to Jerusalem. Okay? And, you know, if I were Jesus, I, I you know, I was happy with a lot of people following me behind, you know. But with Jesus, you know, the quantity is not matter, but the quality. That's why he turned around and talked to the, to the crowd. You know why? Because these people were following Jesus because they have seen Jesus performing a lot of miracles. And the way, you know, he taught in the synagogue, the way he approached the Pharisee and the scribes, very, you know, very interesting. So that's why, on the way with Jesus, but in their mind, they may think that, okay, this is a time for me to get promoted. And then my family, you know, will, uh, will benefit my family also. That's why we cannot read the minds of God or one another, but God can see it through here whatever we might think, right? Turn around and say, what did he say? I forgot. He said that anyone who wants to follow me, you must, you have to, you know, you have to, if anyone comes to me without hating his father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, yes, and his own life too. Wow. We don't understand why he say that. We know we have 10 commandments. The fourth commandment is to honor and respect your parents, right? And Jesus say, love one another, love your neighbor as yourself. How can he say the hating? It's father, mother, something like that. All right, we have to uh, ask God for uh, the wisdom to understand this. Jesus was a Jew, and he often used a Jewish way of speaking that can seem strange to our ears. The language of 
loving, hating, was often a Jewish way of expressing reverberance. You know, if someone refers one thing or one person over another, they are said to love the one and hate the other. That Jesus is saying to his disciples that he is to be preferred even over the members of our family. He is, re he is really calling on us to show him the kind of love that was normally reserved for God alone. We must put God in the first place in our life. That's all. He is not telling us to abandon our family. Please don't do that. Right? Please don't do that. And that is the way how we come. And he is asking for that same quality of love that is due to God alone. Brothers and sisters. And finally, he gave, um, you know, because he, he gave the, the parables. You know, giving the Lord a first place in our life does not happen automatically. We have to think it through and make our own very personal decision for the Lord. We have to take care of our commitment. We have to take our commitment seriously. It's not like, okay, it is Sunday, I feel good, I go to church. If I don't feel good, I don't go. That's not the way. You have to think it through. Like, you know, that a builder who wants to build a tower has to think it through before he starts. Likewise, a king who plans to go to war against another king. We are called to follow him, but we have to take our commitment seriously, and then we will be his disciple not just one moment, not just one day, not just one year, but every day, every moment. And then the reward will be beyond our understanding beyond our expectation, imagination. And that is God is calling us to be. Thank you for listening.